Thomas Beckett became the Archbishop of Canterbury on the Sunday after Pentecost. He lived from 1,118 to 1,170 of the Common Era. He must have been very decisive because that very Sunday, he decided it was time for an ordinance. He wanted to ordain something new, a new festival in honor of the Holy Trinity. So that Sunday after Pentecost, there would be a new festival day in the church, Trinity Sunday. If you had the power to ordain something new for the church, a new festival day, what would it be? What needs to be highlighted in the seasons of the church that could fill a hole? What is missing? Archbishop Beckett knew he had a winning idea. The one-two of Pentecost followed immediately by the Trinity Sunday. Beginning and ending with majesty, Psalm 8 is bookended with, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. As God is to the cosmos, which is imagined in this psalm as the heavens, the moon, the stars, humans are to the earth. The earth, full of creatures, sheep and ox, birds and fish. The dominion model is employed here. Humans are in charge of these creatures. This is similar to the Genesis creation story, which begins our biblical library. There are many psalms, however, that have a different theological understanding, a different underpinning. All creation, plants, fossils, creatures, minerals, on an equal footing with humankind. But in number eight, each of us here has that specific responsibility, like Antonella said, to take care of our pets. Whatever God has created, which is everything, we are to care for and respect because we are subject to God's will. We need wisdom in order to care for creation, wisdom which shines in delight and definition. She who is speaks loudly and everywhere, high up on the roads, besides entrances to cities and at portals leading into residences. And when she speaks, she cries out so that no one can ignore her. But in addition to her vocal prowess, she gives evidence of her ancient origins. Her hymn, verses 22 through 31, details her creation prior to the earth. She helped on a daily basis in the construction of our world. She assisted God in holding the measuring tape to mark the foundations. Wisdom was the right-hand woman, the master worker on the site. And the collegiality between spirit and creator was daily a moment of delight and joy. The most important part of a job is the joy between workers. One can do any job and have a sense of accomplishment with it as long as the right people are by our sides. The spirit, as presented in Proverbs, is one who adores all of creation, and specifically humans, the earth, water, air, and cosmos. The importance of wisdom in our lives can't be understated. At Water Village Church is a growing church. It was begun seven years ago in a factory warehouse by the railroad tracks in Atwater Village. As the young families arrived, they wanted a safer location away from the trains and the industrial district. So a group of members, a task force, was formed. They went out and found a school in Pasadena that would rent out their facility to them each Sunday from late afternoon until Sunday evening. They are full of people coming for a period of time, leaving with a core group staying around. This core group is mostly made of young professional families with two to three children. They have a commissioned ruling elder for their pastor, Bo Womack. Each Sunday evening, they have a rotating musical group that provides the music for that service. And this group includes babies in arms, toddlers, and musicians who are worshiping in this location in Pasadena. 
Yet they are lacking one thing. They have let me know that they are missing wisdom. There is no one there older than 45. There is no one there who has been a Presbyterian for decades who can help them as they are growing and changing. They have to seek outside consult to find out, for instance, what do deacons do? And how can we do it with young families? Their home communion with Bo and the deacons are not to the elderly, confined to a bed like what was provided to our dearly departed Alice Louise Johnson, but to families who have a child in the hospital who wish to receive the Lord's Supper. Wisdom is needed in many form and guises. They are asking for more people to be there in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Come, be a part of their community. They need wisdom. Listen to the Gospel of John for more words leading to truth and understanding in due time. I still, says Jesus, have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The words of our Lord. Timing strategies are important and helpful and lead towards a likelier possibility that communication and truth will be revealed. Jesus has so much more that he would like to tell his disciples before he leaves them. He is aching to do so, but holds himself back. Unless people are ready to listen and hear, it is pointless. Unless one is kind, smart, sensitive to the person in front of them, the words will not sink in so that truth can move. But even if we are not the ones to offer the needed words, and very often that is the case, there are others. For Jesus, it was the spirit of truth. Within these few passages is the fifth and final promise that Jesus relates will be given to the disciples by the Spirit. Jesus has let them know that it is advantageous for people that he goes away. And the reason is so that the Spirit will come. And what will the Spirit provide? The Spirit will bring forward the teachings of Jesus into the future life of the community in a new and different way. We have a direct tie-in to Proverbs here because the Spirit is the guide, the wisdom, the truth. Perhaps the Spirit will have a new understanding of the information gleaned from God and relay it in a way that the disciples from all generations can bear to hear it. Then Jesus states that the Spirit will glorify God. Glorify to make visible the presence of God. All that we have is from God, and it can be offered in many different ways so that the timing strategies works and the faith is transmitted. Romans was written by Paul to a church that he didn't start and never met. That church was established before 49 CE. There was some friction as the Gentile Christians were emphasizing justification by grace apart from works, especially apart from the law. Apparently, this resulted in some thinking that anything goes. He is reflecting his wisdom gleaned from dealing with the problematic church of Corinth and Galatia. Hear the words from the letter to the Romans, Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. 
Words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The Trinity is revealed in this reading. Peace comes from God through Jesus. The Spirit, due to love poured into us from God, is our gift. And with this strength provided from God comes a process, a process to build our character, to get through suffering leading to that wonderful noun, hope. The possibility that what we want to happen will come to fruition. Our desires will be accompanied by our expectation of achievement. And we will not be disappointed due to this triune power which we glorify. As the Spirit cries out in a powerful voice in Proverbs, so do we have to raise our voices in care of the world. As our city houses 17 people each day into shelter, 34 more fall into the streets. We see the tent cities going up under bridges, tents so much cheaper now than in the past. In our Sepulveda River Basin, under freeway overpasses, in alleyways and under porticles, everywhere that the Spirit is calling to us, she speaks for them and in a loud voice. The timing might be such for our city that we are able to hear and bear ways to help the homeless. With so much information at our fingertips and visually in our path, the spirit just might make it so that we can no longer ignore the Skid Row community because that community has grown and is in our neighborhood. We can be ready to say yes when we are asked to participate in the homeless count. We can say yes when the city wishes to set up a shelter in the Van Nuys parking lot. We can hear about a family shelter and see if they need art supplies and crafts for the many hours in close quarters. We can vote for what we consider to be the improvements in our city and nation. We can celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Los Angeles Parks and Rec program in Parks After Dark. In MacArthur Park, where there is rampant homelessness and trash, there are also 50 free concerts a summer Thursday through Sunday at their outdoor amphitheater. And the lights are on and the youth are playing soccer in the dark evening with the lights on. Something to celebrate. Call Parks and Rec and thanks them for those parks that provide safety and fun during the summer months. When we find young congregations needing wisdom, we can meet with them and offer tips that they can grab onto with gusto. A third of you let me know in a previous sermon that you would like to pull weeds and plants that could be fruitful in a different location. You stated that on Mars, when the Sharona planting greenhouse is created, artificial intelligence should not be the only ones to have fun pulling those weeds, but also so should the astronauts. So I wonder, Xavier, if you could help me come over here and just hold something for me because I would like to show you about something that I pulled. Just hold on a second, you're gonna pull this out, okay? So I have a sidewalk uh, um, before uh, my parkway and this agave, it's a green succulent or semi-succulent, was sticking out right by my sidewalk. Now we know how big these can get. I have one that's bigger than myself and this um, father or mother was about as it came up to about this size on Xavier. So, would you pull that out? I decided to pull this, and this is what I got. Go ahead, pull it. Right, look at this. I got this sucker, it's called. This is attached, like, let's pretend that Xavier is the father plant, like this. I pulled this thing, and this root sucker came out. And at every point, we could see where a pup could come out and could grow a very new, vibrant plant. I pulled this out a week ago, and it still looks pretty good, doesn't it? I know that if I planted this somewhere, it would grow. Thank you so much. You can take that with you. This is an illustration of the spirit sent out by others, always around within the heart of the plant, strong, firm, eager as all get out to pop up in our midst in surprising ways. The church has pups coming out all over the world, in bars, in laundromats, in coffee shops, in small apartments. 
the church's pups are ready to take hold, grow strong, and lift up to heaven. Let us get ready for such action. Let us help send forth suckers to create pups and know that with that strength that we have from the Holy One in three, hope will never, ever disappoint because wisdom is leaving. Amen.